Good afternoon, everyone. Let me introduce myself first. I am Marian Christine V. Patriarca, or ang tawag po sa akin ay Teacher Ting. I am a professor in the Educational Administration area of the College of Education in UP Diliman. Today's session is the third in a series of webinars by a Rex Bookstore in the UP College of Education. This webinar's target audience is for teachers and the school administrators. Pero, kung may mga parents po dyan na nanonood, sit back, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Because you might just be gaining an insight or two. Okay? Um, ang aking presentation is, Teacher, Teacher, Please Help Me. Part 1. Bakit po ito ang napili ko? Um... Kasi, since bago na po ang ating mode of delivery ng learning, which is online, palagay ko, ito ang maririnig palagi ng mga guro galing sa magulang. Patulong po, teacher, paano po gagawin ito? Um, ano ang gagawin ko susunod? Kaya, ito po yung title na napili ko. Okay. Um, specifically, I will be talking about empowering teachers in guiding parents promote safe and protective learning environment in the context of home-based learning. Honestly, I requested for this topic since my field is on administration of educational administration of educational institutions, and at the same time, a hands-on mother to my two kids. I am very engaged in their school, so much so that I'm a parent officer. So um, I can see both views from the parent's point of view and sa kabilang side, from the administrator's point of view as well. So balance po ang nakikita natin. Um, there are three major points that I will be discussing. First one is encouraging parent engagement. Second one is keeping communication lines open. And lastly, building positive relationships. Okay. Ito pong slide na to, nakikita po natin theory and practice. During the course of my discussion, I will be fusing together theory and practice. Oops, sadali po. Huwag po tayo ma-intimidate sa terminolohiyang teoria. Very academic po ba? Ayan, may nakita kong oo. Tumatango. Huwag po kayong mag-alala. Sisimplihan lang po natin. Okay? Theory makes sense of what we observe. It is an outcome. Theo the theory are also concepts and helps us, helps us explain what is happening around us. Okay? On the other hand... Practice validates what we are doing through theory. So, kita po ninyo sa slide, merong arrow from theory to practice and from practice to theory. So, this only means that there is reciprocity between theory and practice. So, may relationship po yung dalawang yan. Ang mga bagay-bagay na nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran ay may kaakibat pong teorya. Okay, the first topic that I will be discussing is on encouraging parent engagement. We can never stress enough the effects and importance of active parent involvement in the lives of their child, of our children, especially during this pandemic. Now, more than ever, we need the active engagement or participation of parents in the lives of their children especially now that we have different modes of learning, like online. This means that this will be home-based. Sa bahay po mag-aaral ang mga estudyante, nasa bahay po ang kanilang mga silid-aralan. Ang mga magulang po ang makakasama nila sa kanilang pag-aaral. Sa mga magulang na nanonood ngayon, 
nakikinikinita na po ba ninyo ang mangyayari sa inyo pagdating ng Agosto sa mga eskwelahang magbubukas sa Agosto o sa Hulyo sa mga eskwelahang magbubukas sa Hulyo? Uh, mas bibigat po ang magiging trabaho natin. Pero, kakayanin po natin. In this slide, I'd like to share with you a model on parent leadership by the Intercultural Development Research Association. This is very useful for school administrators to engage parents in school. In fact, this is a training model for parents on how to become parent leaders. The process is sequential. So pag sinasabi po nating sequential, may steps. So may first step, second step, third step, fourth step. So itong mod modelo na ito, meron pong four steps. Okay? You cannot move on to the next level kapag hindi po na-fulfill yung previous level. Okay? So when you say parent leaders sa mga eskwelahan, ano ang una po nating naiisip? PTA, hindi po ba? Ang mga parent officers. Yun usually yung yun, yun talaga yung kanilang organisasyon eh. So PTA. But this model of parent leadership shows that all parents can indeed become leaders. So ano yung unang-una sa modelo na to? Parent as teachers. Tama po, di po ba? Okay? Because parents are the first teachers of their children. Ako bilang magulang, ako po ang unang naging guro ng aking mga anak. Kayo rin po, unang naging guro ng inyong mga anak. Um, tinuruan po natin sila ng ABC. Yung ating alphabet song. Hindi po ba? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yun. Sa konsepto po ito ng English. Okay? Tapos, tinuruan din po natin sila mag-identify ng mga bagay-bagay tulad ng prutas, mga hayop, kung anong tawag sa mga tao sa nakasama sa bahay, mama, papa, mommy, daddy. These are all concepts in the subject of English. Okay. Sa math naman, ano ang mga una natin tinuro sa kanila? Ang basic na pagbibilang. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. O one, two, three, four. Okay. Tapos, tinuruan din natin sila ng konsepto ng malaki, maliit. Okay. More or less. So, these are math concepts. Sa science naman, oh, tinuro natin sa kanila ko ano ang day and night. Kapag madilim na sa labas, gabi. Kapag maliwanag, araw. Tinuruan din natin sila ng konseptong hot and cold. Tapos, yung ating paboritong kanta na my toes, my knees, my shoulders, my head. So, this is a body parts concept. So, science po na subject yon, Okay? Kaya lahat po ng magulang, o kung doon sa mga batang walang magulang, mga guardians, ay naging mga guru na. Hindi lang po siguro sila aware na naging guru na po sila. Okay? So next is parents as resources to teachers. Hmm, paano ba ito? Parents should not only be seen as volunteers or tagasend ng messages sa mga co-parents or extra manpower kapag may mga school events or mga katulong natin pag-raise ng funds. Okay? Rather, Parents should be seen 
as sharing instructional support roles with the school. Ano ba yon? Ano ba yung instructional support na yon? Okay? What they can contribute to the school is made known to them. So parents can indeed perform tasks of teachers in supporting instructions. Ang purpose nito is to strengthen the parent's self-concept. So ano po or paano po maging resources as uh, maging resources ng teachers ang parents for instructional support. Pag-tutor. Parents can help the school by teaching the kids at home. Yung konsepto ng pag-tutor, instructional support po 'yun. Pagiging teacher assistant po 'yun. Okay? So yung mga nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran, yung daily activities natin, binibigyan lang natin sila ng konsepto, okay, para mas maintindihan at ma-appreciate natin po lahat kung ano ang nangyayari sa atin. Okay? Na, okay, tama pala ang ginagawa ko. So, instructional support pala ang pag tutor ko sa anak ko. Tama po yun. Kasama po yun sa modelo ng parent leadership. Okay? Next. Parents as decision makers. Okay? Yes, parents are the ones deciding kung anong eskwelahan, i-enroll ang kanilang mga anak. Kung i-enroll pa nila ang kanilang mga anak sa dati nilang eskwelahan. Okay? But the decision making here is on calling the shots in school projects, committees, or events. Sa konteksto po ito ng eskwelahan. Okay? So this stage clearly shows leadership roles of parents already, okay? They are given more responsibility in planning and deciding school events and projects, okay? Nakikita po ba natin ang pag-level up ng roles ng parents sa model na ito? First, naging parents as teachers sila. Sunod, naging parents as resources to teachers, And now, as decision makers. So, itong modelo na to, lumalawak na ang responsibilidad ng mga magulang sa konteksto ng eskwelahan. Okay? So, mas engaged na sila. Mas may contribution na sila. May buy-in sila. Okay? Sunod naman, the last level is parents as trainers. Okay? Galing, no? That the end goal of this model is for parents not just to be leaders, but to be trainers as well. Okay? Ang itong modelo na to, um, ina-empower mo ang mga parents to be leaders in the school. So, iniiwasan po na modelong, modelong ito ang tinatawag na parent leader fatigue. Di po ba? Um, ang mga parent leaders, simula grade 1 hanggang grade 6, sila na lang at sila. Di po ba? So, pag ganun, medyo napapagod din yung mga parents na yon. So, kailangan natin silang uh, tulungan. Okay? So, how can parents be become trainers? At this stage, parents become facilitators, coaches, and mentors. They guide other parents and have a peer support, okay? Para yun nga, mawala yung tinatawag na parent leader fatigue na, na terminolohiya, okay? So this model was guided with the premise that parents care a lot about the education of their children. Given the proper support, any parent can be a leader to create an excellent learning environment. Okay? Ganda ng modelo, no? Meron palang ganong modelo. Parent leadership model. Okay. The next slide I'm going to show you is a framework that is being supported by numerous researchers, especially in the field of social sciences. So, parent leadership, ito yung na-discuss natin kanina. 
plus, oh, may plus, may addition po tayo ngayon, plus school leadership. Siyempre kung may plus, may equals. Ano po kaya ang equals nito? Parent leadership plus school leadership equals ano po? Student success. Tama po. Tama po. Tamang hula po kayo. So parent leadership plus school leadership equals student success. Okay? Um, but the student success can be further qualified by better academic achievement, improved behavior and enhanced social skills, and resilience. But I'd like to stress to the teachers that we are in the best position or you are in the best position to advocate that having high grades does not define success. Or having high grades does not define a student. Having grades in the line of nine or straight A's does not spell success in the future. Okay? Madami po tayong mga kilalang mga tao na hindi naman din ganun kagalingan ng kanilang kabataan. Pero, ngayon, they hold top positions in corporations or companies and some of them even own their own companies. Don't get me wrong though, grades are important, but it is not a defining moment of a student. Mental health issues can arise from this mindset. Okay? So, what is most important is a perfect balance of better academic achievement. So, anong tawag po natin dito? IQ. Improved behavior and enhanced social skills. Ano po ito? Tama po. EQ. And resilience. Ano naman po itong resilience? Ito yung tinatawag na AQ or adversity quotient, which is the ability of the person to deal with the adversities, trials, or challenges in life. For me, bilang isang guro, bilang isang magulang din, striking a balance between these three will spell success for students. So, hindi sobra dun sa isa, hindi kulang sa isa, balance lang po ng IQ, EQ, and AQ. Okay? Um, having said that about student success and that parent engagement is crucial for it, you might be thinking encouraging parent engagement. How? Paano? Iniis iniisip po siguro ninyo, eh nung pre-ECQ nga, ang busy-busy na ng parents. Ngayon pa kayang nasa GCQ tayo, na mas busy ang mga parents. Paano na po natin sila may engage? Hindi po ba mas busy ang mga tao ngayong work from home setup kesa po dati? Okay? So, paano natin may encourage ang parent engagement sa panahon ngayon? Unang-una, parent involvement. But, I would just like to clarify first that parent involvement, uh, parent involvement between parent involvement and parent engagement. Okay? Parent involvement is when parents attend school events, buy tickets, Ito nung pre, pre, ano po ito ha, pre-ECQ days. Nanonood kayo ng program sa school, nag-a-attend ng um, parent-teacher conferences, okay? 
Sa parent engagement naman, on the other hand, ang parents and teachers have a shared responsibility to meet the goals for the child. So, naging partner sila. So, hawak kamay sila to fulfill the goals for the child. Okay? So, in essence, sa parent engagement, parents have inputs. Okay? But this is not to undermine parent involvement because it is the first step in parent engagement. Hence, both are important. Okay? So, how do we involve parents? Ngayong online learning at nasa bahay, lahat ng mga tao. Paano? Unang-una, pinaka-importante, get them to attend online parent orientation. Okay? So, since everything is online now, siguro naman po, ang mga parents, wala na pong mag-absent. Kasi, Kapag online parent orientation, ang kailangan lang po nila ay eh, kahit cellphone, kahit na, nakapila po sila sa grocery, nanonood na sila ng orientation ng kanilang mga anak, or nakapila sila bibili ng gamot, nakapila sa bangko, ayan, kasama na po sila sa parent orientation. So that is the first step, okay, in getting parents involved. Lalo na po ngayon na iba ang setup. So you have to get them attend online parent orientation. Okay? Next. You also um, let them familiarize um, with how to operate the laptop, the computer, the tablets, the printers, or yung paggamit ng Zoom, Messenger, and Skype. Okay? Um, may mga parents po na hindi ganun kateki. Okay? Hindi po sila gumagamit ng laptop. Okay? Kasi hindi po siguro kailangan, hindi po siguro nila kailangan sa trabaho. Kaya they do not see the need for it. Okay? But since online po lahat ngayon, kailangan po nilang malaman or alamin kung paano mag operate. Okay? Or yung tinatawag na basic technical troubleshooting. Okay? So given all these three, these are the three basic steps for parents to be involved. Okay? So, how do we really engage parents? I'd like to use uh, sensory representations. Okay? Tatlo po ito. First one is hearing. As teachers and school administrators, we have to listen to the parents' concern, worries, and hopes. We have to acknowledge their fear of technology. We tinatawag na mga technophobic. Our kids now are what they call the Generation Z or the digital natives. Galing nila sa computer, sa cellphone, lahat ng gadgets, magaling sila. Hindi mo na sila kailangan i-orient. Hindi na na kailangan magbasa ng manual. Okay? Kasi alam nila kung paano nila i-operate yun. Okay? Parents of the Gen Z, yung mga magulang po ngayon, are those parents na Generation X. Some may even be baby boomers while others are millennials, okay, mga young parents. So, yung profile ng parents natin ngayon, malawak. There's a wide range, okay? Others are tech savvy, but some may not have even used a laptop, okay? Baka ang huling gamit nila ng laptop, eh, hindi nga laptop, PC pa. Yung, alam nyo yung square, floppy disk, yun. Baka yung pa yung huling-huli nilang nagamit. So that was how many technologies ago? 20 years ago na technology yon Tama po? 90s. Tama, no? 90s. Or nung late 80s. Yan. So we should not undermine the concerns of the parents 
no matter how trivial or small they are, such as hindi sila marunong mag-download ng Zoom application, hindi sila marunong uh, kumamit ng messenger na video, or hindi sila marunong gumamit ng Google Hangouts, okay? So we, we should not undermine that because that is their reality. Their reality is different from ours. Their reality is different from others. Okay? So next is the sense of touch. Okay? We should validate their feelings. We should empathize, empathize with them. We acknowledge their concern that this school year is difficult. Marami pong may hirap ngayong panahon na ito. Kasi sa online learning, may mga nawalan po ng trabaho. Okay? Uh, there's a lot of difficulty around us now. But we have to stress that we need to be partners with them to overcome these challenges that this pandemic presents. Kung feeling nila nahihirapan po sila mag-cope sa home-based learning, let us validate it. Let us acknowledge it. And tell them na hindi po sila nag-iisa na ganun ang kalagayan. The mere fact that parents know that they are not alone is already a boost in their confidence. So isipin po nila, ah, hindi lang pala ako. Marami pa pala kami na hindi pa gumagamit ng Zoom. Ganyan. Marami pa pala kami na hindi alam ano yung Google Meet, ano yung Google Hangout, ano yung Google Classroom. Don't you? Let us validate that. Okay? Because it's a, it's a, it's, it will boost their self-confidence that they're not just alone in this fight. Okay? The next one is sense of sight. We need to tell them how their involvement spells a big difference for their kids and school. Na kailangan natin ang malaking tulong nila. I can never stress enough na malaki ang tulong talaga ng mga magulang sa panahon ngayon. Okay? When parents feel that they are needed, they will be very willing to engage. Hence, parents are the bridges between the students and the school. So in the context of home-based learning, we can only ensure a safe and protective learning environment if we have parents who are engaged. So that's the first part. The second part is keeping communication lines open. Um, for this one, I can, again, I can never stress enough that since face-to-face -face interaction is limited and nonverbal cues cannot be interpreted, how we craft messages or letters for parents is vital, okay? It has to be clear, crystal clear, claro po dapat, okay? Hindi po pwedeng mag between the lines ang mga magulang at baka kung ano, ano po ang mga spekulasyon na maiisip nila, okay? Ayaw po nating mangyari yun. Um, I'd like to share with you a quote by Confucius. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. True or false? Ayan. May mga nagkasabing, true, true, true teacher, true. Iba naman, sabi, false. Okay? What if we replace the word life with message? Message is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. True or false? Nagkasabing true, true ulit. 
Ba naman? False. False. Okay? But come to think of it, life is very simple. People just make it complicated. In this next slide is an example of how important punctuation marks are. Kalain mo, ang laki pala ng epekto ng punctuation mark. Okay? Ayan. Let's eat grandma. Sabi nung matanda, what? Yun pala. Let's eat may kama, grandma. Punctuation saves lives. If you miss putting the kama, mag-iiba ang meaning niya. Hence, a wrong message is sent. In short, magkakaroon ng tinatawag na communication breakdown. Kasi, hindi mo na iparating ang gusto mong mangyari talaga. Okay? There is a failure in communication resulting na lack. There is a failure in exchange of communication. Okay? So next, I'd like to present to you a communication model. Okay? Um, this model is touted as the mother of all models, which was developed post-World War II. So matagal na to. Um, 1940s. Okay? This was developed by Shannon and Weaver. Kaya ang tawag po ay Shannon Weaver's Model of Communication. This has six elements. The sender, the encoder, the channel, the decoder, and the receiver. The sender is the source of information. The encoder is the machine that encodes our words using codes like radio waves or binary digits. Kasi ito pong modelo na to, ginamit ng teknolohiya before, is just telephone. Okay? Uh, but the encoder here can also be a person. Okay? Transmitting the message. Next is the channel, which is the infrastructure, or this is sometimes called the medium, to transmit our message. Okay? The decoder is the exact opposite of encoder. It is how the message is received using technology. And receiver is the destination of the message. Kung kanino pupunta yung mensahe. Okay? At this point, from the sender to the receiver, communication has occurred. When a message was sent and received. Okay? Then, feedback happens. Okay? But in this model... There is a unique element, which is called, ayan po, nasa gitna. Ano po yan? Noise. Ingay. Ingay. Di ba po kapag may kausap tayo na nasa tabi po tayo ng daan, may dumaan na motor, maharurot, o tricycle. Ingay di po ba? Hindi po natin naintindihan kung ano yung sinasabi ng kausap natin. Okay? So this noise should be eliminated so that we can better understand the person whom we are talking to. Or if it, will, it, it cannot be eliminated, uh, it can be managed. Okay? So that the message will still be understood. Okay? Pero itong noise na ito, meron palang tinatawag na internal noise tsaka external noise. Akalain mo, May dalawang parte pa pala ng ingay na ito, okay? Now, internal noise daw happens when a mistake is done during the encoding process. So, kunwari, gumagawa ng sulat, tapos yun nga, doon sa ating slide kanina na kulang ng punctuation mark na kama or na misspell, ito yung tinatawag na internal noise. Pag may mga mali, okay, sa pag-encode ng mensahe. Okay? Sa external noise naman, ito yung kanina, na example natin, uh, when something outside the message impedes it. Okay? O kunwari, uh, kausap natin, may kausap tayo, tapos biglang garbled na. Okay? Garbled na yung ating kausap. So, meron ng, uh, may effect na yung channel, yung medium, kasi nagkakaroon ng noise. Hindi mo na rin naintindihan kung ano yung message ng tao. Okay? 
So, um, it also happens kapag nagkaroon ka ng failed internet connection. Okay? Or mahinang internet connection. So, in short, this model made us aware that there is a possibility of noise when we communicate. Okay? Na meron palang konseptong noise. So, our goal is to eliminate the noise para po maintindihan tayo ng mga magulang. Okay? When we communicate something. So, when communicating with parents, we have to know the best form of communication platform. Okay? May mga application for communication, pwede rin email or the standard na text message, regular text message. Okay? Dapat alam po natin kung ano ang may access ang mga magulang. Okay. The first one in communicating with parents, know the best form of communication platform. So yung kaninang email, text message. Now, meron po tayong tinatawag na Viber. Ayan. Sino po yung Viber intensive dito? Na pagising ng umaga, pagkamulat, check Viber messages. Ayan. Okay? Next na app, ano to? Messenger. Okay? Telegram. Skype. At yung ginagamit namin ng Rex Bookstore sa pag-stream sa Facebook, eh, Zoom. Okay? This is very popular now. May kwento po ako. I remember last February, during one of my classes in the graduate level, I was mentioning to my students that we need to download Zoom for online classes. Kasi po, may mga estudyante po ako na galing pa ng Las Piñas, galing pa ng Cavite, galing pa ng Lulacan. Yung iba po, galing pa ng Isabela. Ganun po kalayo. Nagpupunta po sila sa UP para mag-attend ng class, linggo-linggo. Nakakaawa po sila dahil napapagod po ako sa ginagawa nila. Imagine mo yung biyahe po nila. Tapos ang traffic pa. So, it, they take a lot of time, takes a lot of time for them to go to UP. Eh, dulo sa dulo. Kunwari, isang estudyante, taga Las Piñas, punta ka ng Diliman. Dulo sa dulo yun. Out of town na po ang tawag ko doon sa layo niya. So, biyahe mo, two, three hours. Normal yun. Kung matraffic pa, may nagbanggaan sa EDSA. So, apat na oras. So, imagine mo, masabi ko sa kanila, Let's do online classes through Zoom. Hindi naman sila mag-a-absent. Hindi ko sila i-absent. Kasi they're present. They're attending the discussion. They're still in the loop with what's happening. Okay? So they can, uh, they can still continue discussions. Pero, hindi po sila nag-download. Pumapasok pa rin sila sa diliman. So sabi ko, ah, okay. They might not yet see the need for it. Okay? Hindi pa nila kasi kailangan. Kaya, chill lang sila. Ayaw pa nilang gamitin yung Zoom. Okay? It wasn't necessarily in their lives yet. But now, see, just four months after, we cannot live without this platform or any video conferencing, video conferencing platforms or apps kasi kailangan-kailangan na po natin sila. Okay? Ang bilis-bilis na mga pangyayari. Uh, but other schools um, use G Suite and Microsoft Teams, okay? So, in communicating with parents, we have to know kung ano yung kanilang uh, preferred or ano yung may access sila, okay? That's one. The next one is foster a sense of trust. Assure the parents that everything that will be discussed will remain confidential and you follow through, okay? Standard naman po ito sa mga parents, Okay? Um, we have to make the parents feel that we as teachers can be trusted. Kailangan maramdaman ng mga magulang na maaasahan tayo o kayo sa mga sensitibong usapin. Okay? 
The next one is saying something positive. During meetings with parents, start out by saying something positive about their child. I tell you, it will go a long way. Okay? These words are music to any parent's ears. Your child is cheerful. Ang saya niya, lagi siya nakasmile. Hardworking. Napakamatulungin po ng anak ninyo. Tinulungan ni classmate niya magbukat ng kanyang bag. Or helpful. Yung po yung tinulungan magbukat ng bag. Sorry, nalito na ako. And being kind. Okay? Kapag ito ang maririnig ng mga magulang, priceless po ang tuwa nila. I should know because I'm also a parent. And I'd love hearing this from the teachers of my kids more than the report that they got high grades. Mas gusto ko po ito. Kasi this is the core of who they are. Okay? So next is listen. We acknowledge the opinion of parents. Listening makes the other person feel valued and important. Okay? During this time of home-based learning, where everything is new to everyone, we all have anxieties. This setup is out of our comfort zones. Itong webinar na ito ngayon, wala pa ito sa comfort zone ko or natin. Nananood kayo dyan sa computer. Dati sa day po tayo na nakikita natin ang mga kausap natin habang nagpe-present sa stage. Okay, kita natin ang kanilang expressions. Okay, verbal cues, non-verbal cues. Kita natin. So, mag-gauge mo kaagad kung kumusta na ang audience mo. Pero ito, ang kausap ko lang, eh, ito pong green light sa aking monitor. Okay, so this is all art, all, this is all out of our comfort zones. Okay. Um, parents will have a lot of worries and challenges. So as teachers, the most we can do is listen. Listen intently to what parents have to say, no matter how trivial it may be. There is value in it. I'm sharing with you a beautiful quote on listening. The biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. But we can restate this quote to we do not listen with the intent to reply, but with the intent to understand. Galing, no? It makes a huge difference that we listen to understand Nakikinig tayo para umintindi. Hindi po tayo nakikinig para makipagdiskusyon. Okay? Next one is avoid presumptions. presumptions. Do not assume that a parent understood that an email or a text message is received and naintindihan na niya. Okay? Hindi po ganun. Um, pag nakita natin sa Viber, oh, red. Ah, okay, red na ni mami yan, red na ni daddy yan. Okay na yan, naintindihan na niya yan. O pag nabasa niya sa email, nakita niya red na rin sa email, naintindihan na niya. So let us not assume. Okay? Receiving a message does not guarantee it is understood. Hence, it is better to make clarificatory statements or be very direct and exhaustive when sending advisories to parents, okay? Um, best if schools can make FAQs or yung tinatawag nilang frequently asked questions or infographics of step-by-step -step guide on what to do. For example, uh, this online enrollment, okay? Um, first step, kunwari, anong gagawin nila? May picture, tas may description. Next step, picture description. Ganun po infographics para wala na pong tanong-tanong at klaro kaagad sa mga magulang. Other other parents kasi, other people, visual learners. So gusto nila may nakita sila. Silang picture. Okay? May pictorial representation nung description. 
mas effective po yun. Okay? And do not also assume that everybody, for example, sa online enrollment, do not assume that everybody has credit cards to pay online or have access to online banking. Okay? We have to exhaust all possible avenues so that schools will be able to cater to all the needs of the parents. Okay, let's be inclusive. And lastly, communicate often. Okay, be proactive, not only during times when problems arise. Make parents feel that they are in the loop of the plans of the school. Do not leave parents out in the dark, grouping of kung anong plano ng school, ano na mangyari sa mga bata, paano na, ano ang senaryo, okay? Communicating more builds confidence. Communicating more means their anxieties are lessened, okay? Kapag may mga bagong developments sa eskwelahan, mas maganda po na inform ang mga parents kasi mas nagaganahan sila o mas nawawala ang takot po nila, okay? So now, let us concretize how to clearly communicate to parents by, take, by taking to example online classes, okay? So, pag may online classes na po tayo, hindi po ba lahat tayo online classes, bawal po mo ng face-to-face, -face, okay? Technology specs, okay? Be detailed with the computer specs required and options if students can use tablets or mobile phones, okay? Ang specs nito ay eh, ganun kadetalye as ilang gig ang kailangan na internal memory, anong version ng MS Office, o anong iOS ang kailangan. Okay, this version, uh, this information, I'm um, sorry, is very helpful to parents so that they would know what kind of laptop to buy. Okay, so that they will not overspend. Okay, sa panahon ngayon po, um, malaking tulong po ang hindi pag-overspend ng mga magulang. Okay? Uh, let us be sensitive to, to the needs of the others financially kasi may mga pamilya po, may mga magulang po na nawala ng trabaho. Okay? So let, let us be sensitive to that. Okay? Online learning became more expensive now actually. Okay? Because of the needed gadgets to be used. Tapos, dagdag pa po natin kung mayroon kang dalawa, like ako, dalawa anak po. Tat paano kung tatlong anak? Apat na anak? Paano yun? Apat na gadgets ang meron dapat ako, apat na laptop. Okay? So yung mga ganun, yung mga ganung yung mga ganung um, detalye, kailangan po malaman din ng parents kung paano rin nila ma-schedule ng paggamit ng mga gadgets ng kanilang mga anak. Okay? Sa mga public schools, ang alam ko, um, yung ibang mga LGUs nagbibigay ng tablet, ng libreng tablet sa mga eskwelahan. Okay? So swerte po ng mga public schools na yun. Kasi Malaking tulong po ang LGU sa kanila. Okay, next is the online platform and resources. Um, you inform the online resources that will be used, such as G Suite ba, Zoom, Skype, Messenger, so that parents can be prepared ahead. Again, let us not assume that parents are familiar with these platforms and apps. Let us give them enough time to familiarize themselves with this. Okay? Nakaka-intimidate po kasi for example, ang Zoom, yung interface po niya, kung bago lang po kayo doon, nakaka-intimidate po siya kasi sa ilalim may mga i-click ka na chat, participants, share screen, tapos uh, tapos kapag iba pa ang tsura niya kapag gamit mo ang cellphone, iba rin ang itsura niya kapag gamit mo laptop. So yung mga ganung detalye, importante po ito eh na namalaman din ng mga parents, okay? Para hindi, ah, uh, parang ayoko na, parang hindi sila magsarado kaagad ng isip, na hindi ko to kaya, okay? So we have to give them enough time for them to be familiarized with it, okay? I remember, um, during during one of our Zoom meetings, um, nitong ECQ na, yung isang colleague namin, takot na takot siya, umindot dun sa, sa, ano, sa keyboard, sa Zoom. Kasi daw, baka kung anong mapindot niya, bigla siyang mawala. Bigla na siyang mag-leave meeting. Ganun. So imagine po ninyo yon na may fear. May fear sa technology. 
and and it's re it's a reality okay we have to embrace that okay and next is kunwari kung online class kailangan ba adult supervision we have to communicate what's expected of them like will they be in the same room with the student the entire time okay or if during online classes adult supervision is indeed needed specify ko ano ang role niya dun sa estudyante na makakasama niya okay kung kailangan ba niya ng basic troubleshooting skills kapag biglang naputol ang internet connection is biglang nawala ang audio ng 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 estudyante biglang nalobat ganyan biglang bumagal ang internet so yon kay uh, we have to we have to communicate to the parents na ito ang requirement ito ang inaexpect dun sa sa adult na mga kasama ng estudyante sa online class. Okay? We have to be very clear with that. Okay? Kasi baka ang ipasama lang doon, eh, isang adult na hindi naman din uh, maalam sa technologies. Okay? Next is data privacy. Okay? State whether parents can take pictures or record online classes. Okay? But I'm sure... Um, Hindi rin to pwede, okay? Be very clear with this, especially with the Data Privacy Act, okay? And last, yung class rules. We have to be very clear with this. Kung during online class ba, eh, no eating, okay? Baka makita nyo yung dami-daming estudyante sa screen ni teacher. Biglang isang bata, kumakain pala ng, ng chichiria may inom ng ng tubig kumakain ng chicharon ganyan so pwede po ba yon so we have in the classroom rules you have to specify kung naka-uniform ba yung mga estudyante I mean, polot polot uniform okay kung paano sila kapag gusto nilang umihi paano gagawin nila or bawal mag-chat sa chat box kung ang gamit nila is zoom ganyan okay so we have to be very clear with this okay you also ask help from parents to reiterate to their children that these online rules are set, okay? And this can also be communicated to the adult who will be supervising the child during online classes, okay? So, by keeping communication lines open, parents will feel that teachers are willing to help them. Hence, when messages are understood, we make the home safe and protective. For the last topic, which is building positive relationships, um, this is made extra challenging now because face-to-face -face interaction is very limited. It's okay, but this is not only about building positive relationships. It is also nurturing and maintaining relationships. Okay, pero ang hirap sa situation po natin ngayon dahil ingrained na sa kultura ng mga Pilipino na napakahilig po natin sa social gatherings because of our um, extended family ties. Okay? Mahilig po, napakahilig po natin sa reunions, sa parties. Okay? Nasa kultura na po, nasa kultura na po kasi nating Pilipino ang mga yan. Okay? But here's a result of Mentimeter and positive relationships. Ano-ano uh, yung mga nakita nating mga words dyan? Supportive, respectful, caring, encouraging positive, understanding, reassuring, okay? These are adjectives describing positive relationships, okay? These are the important elements of it. So wala namang sinasabing mag-reunion tayo, magpa-party tayo para magkaroon ng ganong klaseng relationship, okay? So it's possible that we have, that we nurture positive relationships online, Okay? In this slide, the center of relationships in the context of school is all about connecting. Okay? So you can see the arrows, parent, teacher, student, cyclical. Okay? This connection between the parents, teachers, and students is very important. Kung mawala ang isa sa mga yan, may tinatawag na disconnect. So um, for those, again, for those students who don't have parents, Pwede yung legatin guardian, okay? 
So kung may isang element na nawala dyan, may disconnect. So hindi na siya buo. Okay? So one element has an impact to the other. Okay? So how do teachers or the school build positive relationships to have a safe and protective learning environment? The first one is you get to know your students. Make a questionnaire to get to know your students and their family. Um, this school year, there will your, you teachers will have a new set of students and parents as well. So as teachers, we have to make extra effort to get to know them. In face-to-face -face classroom setting, ang dali po nating makilala yung ating mga estudyante. Kasi nakikita po natin sila araw-araw. Nalalaman po natin kung ano yung favorite nilang merienda, kung anong kinain nilang lunch, kung anong favorite nilang color, ano yung paborito nilang sapatos, ganyan. Kasi nga, frequent ang ating face-to-face -face interaction. Okay? Tapos malalaman din natin kung anong nangyari sa bahay kasi nagkakwento sila. You know how kids are. When they tell stories, walang, walang ano, derderecho. Walang MTRCB. Okay? Kung ano yung nasa isip nila, kung ano yung nakita nila, kwento kay teacher. In that way, the teachers get to know their students more. Pero, pagdating sa online, paano na? Eh, hindi, natin, hindi na natin sila nakikita palagi. So, how do we get to know our students? Okay? One way is to make a questionnaire. Okay? For us to be able to get to know our students and the family. Okay? Um, in fact, ang um, sinasabi nga, the pre-ECQ days, the teachers get to spend more time with the students more than their parents. Tama po, di po ba? Pagising ng bata, nasa eskwelahan na siya, for example, 6.30 ng umaga. Uwi siya ng 3.30 ng hapon or 4 o'clock. So that's how many hours of, its waking, of, of the student's waking time spent in school, spent with the teacher. Pagdating ng bahay, gawa ng assignment, freshen up, dinner, tulog. So that's four hours lang. Whereas sa eskwelahan siya, 8 hours to 9 hours. Okay? Pero ngayon, baliktad ang sitwasyon. Okay? Walang face-to-face -face interaction ng mga teachers, ng mga estudyante. Kaya siya mas challenging ngayon. Okay? Uh, we also have to ask the parents vital information that we should know about their child. Okay? For us to get to know them better. The next one, ito maganda pong tip to. Positive correspondence. Send an email or a text message to at least five parents a week about their child. Sa teachers, extra effort po ito. Okay? But this will go a long way. Just think of it as planting seeds for future harvest. Nobody ever said that nurturing relationships is easy. It takes effort and dedication. So teachers, go that extra mile. Isa din itong pamamaraan para lalo niyo makilalang pamilya ng inyong mga estudyante. Okay, next is be friendly and yet professional. Um, sa mga teachers, <laughs> we speak layman's term, okay? No need to use mga malalalim na words or tinatawag na pedagogical jargon, okay? Then let's not do that. And of course, don't be available. Do not make the parents feel that you are available 24 by 7, Okay? Parents will understand if you cannot answer their email or text message during nighttime or even during weekends, especially if the concern can be slept on, okay? Ibang usapan siyempre kapag emergency ang case, okay? But again, this depends on uh, school setup kasi big schools have communication protocols, okay? Wherein the number of the teacher is only given to a certain parent, okay? But for small size schools, the number, the cell phone number of the teacher is being uh, made available to the parents. Okay? So sa mga parents naman, if you have the number of the teacher, huwag naman po nating panay-panay, uh, panay-panay text sa teacher. Okay? We should also respect them. 
respect their time, okay, for themselves and for their families, okay? Um, let us not use the their cell, cell phone number as a key that we can contact them anytime, okay? Uh, we only use that to clarify matters, important matters, okay? And next, the last one, when we build positive relationships, we, we should always choose kindness. If there is a complaint against you, be open-minded. Let us avoid being defensive, okay? We acknowledge that their complaints are heard. If you made a mistake, apologize and admit it. Parents will not lose their respect towards you. Mas respetuhin ka pa po nila. During this pandemic, when we're in uncertainties abound, let us spread positivity by choosing to be kind. Nabanggit sa mga naunang webinars, na lumayo po tayo sa mga taong nega o mga negative people. Okay? Kasi hindi po ito makakabuti sa atin. Ganun, ganun din po sa eskwelahan. Iwasan po natin magkaroon ng mga negatibong sitwasyon. So in closing, let me share with you this quote. When given the choice between being right or being kind, Choose kind. For parents, school administrators, and teachers, when you keep this in mind, you are ensuring a safe and protective learning environment in the home. Nothing, nothing can go wrong with this mindset. Thank you for joining me in today's webinar on empowering teachers. In guiding parents, promote safe and protective learning environment in the context of home-based learning. This is part one of a two-part webinar series on, ed on EduCampion that I will be conducting. The next one will, will be next Wednesday again, June 24, same time, same channel. Again, I'd like to thank Rex Bookstore and the UP College of Education for this opportunity. Keep safe, stay healthy, and be positive but not the kind of positive that keeps on increasing. Maraming maraming salamat po. At this point, I'd be answering questions already. Okay. Wait, let me get my phone. Hmm. Ayan. Questions from Kian Wong. If parents have three children, for instance, Grades 1, Grades 4, and Grade 8. How would parents help them progress in academics if they only attained elementary education due to a valid reason? Is there any strategic model that may help parents to achieve academic progress of their children? Um, Daddy Kian, ako po, believer ako na hindi kailangan ng educational attainment para matulungan po natin ang ating mga anak. Okay? Educational attainment is uh, achievement. Yes, it is an achievement. But if you want to help your children progress academically, ang kailangan po dyan, nasa loob po ng tao. Hindi po, hindi po kailangan diploma, ng diploma for that. Ano po ang kailangan natin? Yung ang tinatawag ng ni daddy, kung anong may, kung may modelo, strategic model, well, for me, ang importante dyan, nandun ang support ng parents, okay, sa pag-aaral ng kanilang mga anak, nandun ang dedication ng mga parents, and of course, being good role models, okay? Good role models meaning hindi kailangan natapos ka sa pag-aaral, okay? Um, you can say that kahit hindi ka natapos ng iyong pag-aaral, naging successful ka naman. Okay? Ganun po yun. So, hindi po ibig sabihin na kailangan mo matapos ng koleyo para matulungan mo mag-progress academically ang inyong mga anak. Nasa atin po yun. Nasa, nasa, at, nasa sa atin po yun ang ating dedikasyon, ating suporta sa kanila. Okay? Yun. So, next question. 
kay smile da langin. How can we address the issue of students who might take advantage of the online distance learning as an excuse for late submission, not, submission, not submitting requirements despite constant follow-up or reminder? Hmm. So parang gagawin nilang ano, no? Escape, no? Escape mechanism. Okay? Um, you know, um, as administrators, they have to have uh, specific defined rules in submitting requirements, even taking quizzes or kung merong online quizzes. So you have to have specific rules for that. Just as, kasi pwede nyo namang i-apply online kung anong ginagawa nyo nung pre-pandemic days natin. For example, um, ano ang ating policy, anong policy ng eskwelahan kapag late submission? Pwede nyo rin namang i-apply online. Okay? So, kung nag-follow up ka na nag-follow up and, and the school sees that you exhausted all possible means to contact the student, nag-email ka, tumawag ka, nag-viber, nag-skype, nag-zoom, lahat ng ginawa mo at ayaw pa rin niya mag-submit, then as a teacher, you did your part. Okay? So, pag ganun, meron ng necessary consequences for the student who was not able to submit the requirement. Okay? Next. Ah! Si Sir, si Sir Levy ang nagtanong, Sir Levy Espinosa, what about difficult parents? How do you deal with them through the channels you mentioned? Aha! <coughs> okay. Um, gusto ko i-clarify, okay? Wala pong difficult na parent. Yung tingin po nating difficult na parent, eh ito yung mga parents na hindi na-communicate sa kanila ng klaro kung anong gustong mangyari ng eskwelahan. Okay? Kaya sila nangungulit sa text, kaya sila nangungulit sa Viber message, kasi meron silang hindi naintindihan sa proseso. Okay? So, para maiwasan magkaroon ng so-called na difficult parents, Kailangan, pag naglabas ng advisory o ng letter o ng message ang eskwelahan, klaro po talaga. Dapat all bases covered para hindi na po sila magtanong. Okay? Next, ano po ang iyong ideal na kasama ng mga bata na home-based? Sandali, i-restate ko. Ano po yung A? Ah, or ano or sino? Sino ang ideal na kasama ng mga bata sa home-based online lessons nila? You mean po ba yung adult supervision? Okay? Um, well, ideally, parents. But, that's the ideal. <laughs> Hindi po siya realistic. Kasi may mga trabaho din po tayo. Di po balay ka po. Pag nag-online nag class ang aking mga anak, paano ng trabaho ko? Meron akong kailangan gawin. So, okay? So, pwede po natin Ibang adult sa bahay, um, yaya, kung meron, na na-train na po natin. At marami po akong alam na mga yaya or, or, or anybody that can help the student do basic troubleshooting sa computer. Okay? So, kahit sino. Actually, um, when you say adult kasi, 18 years old, di ba? So, kung meron silang older siblings, like mga junior high students, magkaling yan sa, tech, sa, sa, ano, sa technology pwedeng sila ang mag-supervise. Okay? So, wala namang hard uh, a hard, a hard rule na kailangan ng ideal natin, eh, nakagraduate ng college, or, or kailangan may masters or teacher, hindi po. Uh, ang importante lang, meron siyang technical know-how ng basic troubleshooting skills. Okay? Next, uh, galing kay Jerry Condeno San Jose. If in case a student only has his father and his father has a work, say office work, what other ways can a teacher do to address education of that learner? Oh, um, kung yung tatay, um, hindi kasi niya nasabi kung yung office work, eh, on-site ba yung office niya or sa bahay. So let us assume na office work uh, on-site, so nandun sa opisina. What other ways nga the teacher do to address education of that learner? Um, ganto, gan, ganto lang din po yung ating mindset. Ang home-based learning, 
di ba nasa bahay po estudyante, hindi po sa eskwelahan. So kung yung tatay, nandun nagtatrabaho at wala ng ibang possible na mga uh, magulang na makakasama or ibang adult na makakasama ng estudyante sa bahay, way to do the basic troubleshooting skills, ganito po lang siya. Isipin lang po natin, uh, di po ba nung pre-ECQ, iniiwan natin sa eskwelahan ang mga estudyante? Okay? Hindi natin iniisip. We fully trust them. Okay, we fully trust the school that they're doing the right thing for our kids. Ganon din po sa online learning. Okay? Um, I am sure the schools will be very flexible. Meron silang liwi for flexibility in terms of understanding, in terms of accommodating the needs of the students. Okay? Sigurado po, naisip na ng mga skwelahan ang garitong senaryo. So I'm sure schools have already policies in place for situations like this. Okay? So, tiwala lang po tayo, Daddy. Kapit lang. Kaya yan. Okay? Next, um, how to deal how to deal with galing kay Ma Elaine MP. How to deal with parents who seem to know may quotation siya. Know everything and are not open to suggest suggestions. Although it's very apparent that they need the info. Hmm. Ah, uh, parang ano lang po yan. Parang dun sa unang, dun sa tanong po kanina ni Sir Levy, dun sa about difficult parents, um, marami na rin po ako nak-encounter ng mga parents, okay, uh, na difficult, na, na know everything, di pa difficult, na know everything, okay? Sila yung mga may sasabihin ka, ah, okay, alam ko na yan, may sabihin ka, ah, alam ko na, ganyan, okay? Ah, uh, well, the only way for us, hindi natin sila pwedeng maiba. Hindi natin, we cannot undo, we cannot change them. Okay? Um, what we can only do is understand and to be kind to them. Okay? Kasi itong mga parents that um, know everything, um, they need to realize that um, there are, um, ano ba to? There are experiences that it's okay to admit uh, experiences that they are failed, that they failed, the experiences that they were humbled. Okay? Um, ibang, medyo malalim kasi ang, ang, ang hugot ng mga parents who know everything. So may pagka-defensive sila. So, so ano na yan, sa, sa pagkataon na nung, nung, nung parent. But uh, as teachers, hindi po natin sila uh, mababago. What we can only do is widen our understanding and we accept them as who they are. Okay? Hindi, wag po natin i-resist sa isip natin na ito kasing parent na to eh. Um, feeling niya, alam niya lahat. Pag ganun po kasing nasa isip natin kaagad, sarado na. Meron tayong judgment sa tao. So, let's not do that. We just have to be open-minded na eventually, okay, unti-unti, magbabago din siya. Unti-unti, Okay, i-admit na niya na kailangan niya ng tulong. Okay? And in the time of online learning, I'm sure parents will need a lot of help. Okay? Talagang nasabihin nila, teacher, teacher, kailangan mo po ng tulong. Okay, next. Um, galing kay Vicenta Albano sa Diao. If parents or pupils could not be reached through messaging, can we do home visit once in a while? Oh! Perfect idea. But, uh, since nasa pandemic po tayo ngayon, uh, the home visit is really ideal, okay? We do that before in the school that I was managing. We do home visits, okay? It's it's the best way for us to know the the condition in the house, okay? And the dynamics in the house. But while we are in the pandemic, it's okay to visit as long as we follow uh, health protocols. And of course, if the parent allows us to visit them at home. So we have to ask permission. Okay, hindi yung biglang bubulaga, kakatok ka na lang. Hello, I'm here. Huwag po, okay? Baka magkagulatan po tayong lahat. Okay, next question. Laisa lumaban, paano po kaya sa sitwasyon ng magulang na non-reader? Tama, okay? At maghapong namasukan bilang kasambahay, labandera, o di kaya'y nangangalakal lamang for a living? 
paano po kaya matutugunan ang pagsubaybay sa mga batang mag-aaral? Okay. Ha. Um, itong mga magulang na to, okay, um, malaki po ang role, okay, ng mga teachers sa mga sitwasyong ganito. Kaya nga po, di po ba, um, ang DepEd, maraming mga alternative delivery modes para uh, maka-reach out sa ganito mga klaseng estudyante. Okay? So, um, the key here is, uh, the key here for the students to go to school and to give value to education, eh, mga guro. Pero, the teachers, again, can do so much. Okay? Dapat ang kalahati nung 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 senaryo nandoon yung yung interest ng magulang okay pero pag uh, non-reader actually wala rin ako issue pag non-reader like like what i mentioned earlier doon sa tanong about uh, what if hindi nakagraduate ng elementary ang ang parent paano matutulungan the same with non-readers okay hindi mo naman kailangan uh, na nakagraduate ka uh, hindi po kailangan na teacher ka, professor ka, manager ka sa bangko para matulungan mong anak mo na pag-aaral. So kahit labandera ka, in fact, meron pong nakagraduate sa UP Diliman who delivered the valedictory speech ng undergrad that was years ago, anak po siya ng isang labandera. Very inspiring po ang kwento niya. So, yun pa lang po, um, hindi po kailangan na, na nakatapos po tayo para matulungan po natin o matugunan po ang pag-aaral ng ating mga anak. Nasa sa atin po yun. Okay? At, of course, in partnership in, with DepEd. Okay? Marami po silang mga um, iba't ibang programa para, pa, pa, so that they can reach out to all the learners. Okay? Yun. Okay. So, sabi po, uh, no more questions. So, I hope I was able to impart knowledge um, during this webinar. And I hope to see you again next Wednesday. Same time, same channel. Thank you.